Hi, welcome to the session on uh, CMA part two, strategic financial management. In this session, we'll discuss about the risk management. We'll discuss in detail about what is risk and how the risk affects the business. How do we respond to the risk? risk management risk management what is a risk we have some expectations we have some vision we have some mission so what happens if there is a deviations from those what we expected there are some deviations which are different from our expectations. Then we call it as a risk. It is the potential of gaining or losing of something in value. The business needs to identify the risk and find what is the outcome of that risk. What is the outcome? So ultimately, how it is going to affect the business? Is it going to give some you know, gain? Because we cannot say that risk is always a risk to the company. It gives a loss to the company. No, because when you deliberately accept a certain risk, your returns may increase. Okay, so a risk is a deviation from those what we expected. Now, what is a risk management? When it is going to affect badly. So in that case, we wish to minimize that risk as much as possible. We control the risk. We monitor the risk. So it should be in an acceptable level and this is the reason why we try to mitigate the risk try to mitigate the risk we try to manage the risk we try to minimize the risk so overall risk management is to is to identify the risk different types of risks you evaluate the risk once you identify them and prioritize the risk that what is the risk that is to be addressed first what is the risk that is to be addressed first some risk you may identify evaluate but still may not respond because that is not going to have an impact on your business yeah so the objective of the risk management is giving an assurance that the risk is going to minimize to a maximum extent as the business wants. So you have a certain objective to what extent the risk is to be minimized. You use a minim, you know, controls to minimize the risk as much as possible and monitor it from time to time, whether the risk is really managed well or not. But one thing you need to remember that having the controls having the controls you cannot give guarantee that the risk will be zero we can only give an assurance that to what extent a risk can be minimized then where that risk you know happens where the risk takes place in the organization and who is responsible for managing the risk as we know that the risk is going to have an impact on the company's overall objectives. So there should be a, 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 you know, a risk management team, a risk management department in the company. So let us assume that we have a risk management department in a corporation and uh, we appointed a CRO, Chief Risk Officer, who is in charge of managing the risk to the company. So 
this risk we need to see that in various ways therefore better this position the candidate should have the well versed experience in accounting economics like you know sometimes you know financial non financial issues legal and of course in some companies you need to have some estimations etc strategic way so you may look for the actuarial services but in certain companies like insurance companies etc okay so what is the role of this chief risk officer as you know that uh, we cannot control the risk just because of having a static controls risk happens risk you know takes place in every organization from time to time so we cannot say that uh, once we have controls the risk is going to be minimized so we need to monitor constantly to see that uh, what are the potential risks that are going to take place and how do we respond yeah and this is what we know that in a enterprise risk management erm okay so he is going to monitor the risk as a part of what poso erm poso erm committee of sponsoring organizations enterprise risk management erm now what are the benefits of risk management as we need to incur lots of amount on you know identification evaluation and responding the risk so what is the benefit the other side of this risk management okay so in the business organization we can develop a risk focused culture risk focused culture that we can identify the potential risks and we can respond to the risk risk is just not a financial risk there are many risks so we can you know identify the risks and with this we can have a focused culture in the organization that every time you identify certain risk there is a process that how do you respond after evaluating the risk and of course in a corporate company it is a requirement that we need to report on the risk yes it is a you know peer pressure legal pressure to have the code of ethics and of course on the risk management and we can estimate the risk we can identify the potential risks so that we are ready to face or respond to the risk as we have a risk management system in the organization so the resources can be it can be like a human resources it can be a financial resources it can be other asset resources can be effectively used in the organization and the uh, risk management is not only just from the company's internal point of view but uh, we need to maintain some compliance as well right so this is one of the or, you know objectives of our internal control system so that we can have an effective coordination of uh, regulatory and compliance issues these are the benefits of the risk management but having the risk management tools in the company as i said that uh, we cannot give guarantee that the risk is going to be zero but at least we can minimize the risk why we can only minimize the risk why cannot we give guarantee that the risk is not going to happen because there are some limitations though we have strong internal controls strong policies and procedures still there are some limitations of you know the risk management what are they management override we set policies and procedures we have strong internal controls but at the same time the management sometimes may override these set policies yes we make the rules we break the rules yeah that is one of the limitations of risk management sometimes the policies or the controls are set are developed because of you know the uh, some identification of some risks but during the identification and assessment of the risk the judgment might be wrong the judgment might be wrong 
so based on the wrong judgment you will develop a wrong control and on this you will have some monitoring so you are spending amount on that you are spending some amount on that but it is of no you know no use at all not an effective control it may not detect some con you know risks okay because of the wrong judgments you may develop wrong controls and the next uh, limitation is the cost benefit what does it mean as the industry or a corporate is exposed to lots of risks but we cannot respond to each and every risk responding to a risk you need to incur cost you need to respond to a risk you need to incur a cost so what is the benefit we are getting from that particular you know control to respond to a risk cost benefit if the benefit is greater higher than the cost what we incur it's okay fine but if the cost is more than the benefit what we get it's of no use so this is the reason why some corporates though there is a risk still they accept because the the cost uh, to respond to this risk or to mitigate the risk is higher than the benefit what we receive In the last one the limitation is very very you know uh, uh, dangerous in most of the organizations is the collision so when we have segregation of duties who has to do what like make a checker policy prepared by verified by authorized by uh, independent you know checks in a sense in independent investigations but still the employees may collude okay so prepared by verified by authorized by all the three people are together to commit some fraud so your controls may not be effective here because there is a collision between these employees though we have a strong control still there is a risk this is one of the great limitations of risk management yep now let us categorize these risks into a broader you know categories here they include hazard risk financial risk operational risk and strategic risks hazard risks you have certain you know risks which are beyond your capacity you may have natural disasters floods earthquakes volcano yeah certain issues like that financial risk you may have certain pricing issues assets you know become outdated automatically because of you know advanced technology currency risk because of the foreign exchange we'll discuss in detail of course but just let us list down what type of risk we face here liquidity risk we do not have enough money to run our company well operational risk is a risk that takes place on day to day operations of the business like reconciliations customer satisfaction the quality issues integrity within the company reputations goodwill etc internal poaching employees knowledge drain you don't have sufficient skilled you know uh, human resources strategic risk or budget went wrong okay social trend is different heavy competition okay and capital in a long term basis is not enough now let us discuss in detail about these risks operational financial strategic and hazard risks hazard risks that take place usually you know the we can say the act of god mostly they are insurable means what we can share with someone else that your factory is affected by the floods almost in every 3 to 4 years time once in every 3 to 4 years time so you just want to respond to that risk your goods are washed off okay 
So you check with the insurance company whether there is any clause to cover this kind of loss. Natural disasters, incapacity, the cognitions capacity or death of senior officers, like you have key men in the company, all right, there is a problem, yeah, we lose them. Sabotage, the revenge from the terminated employees, yeah, and other issues. These are all the hazard risks.